Lil Tay is back from the dead and she isn't so Lil anymore. After disappearing from the internet for over five years, if one thing has changed, it certainly isn't her famous catchphrase. Y'all already know what the fuck going on, bitch! Lil Tay's back, it's been five years and y'all still broke! So about two months ago, the internet was freaking out after this photo was posted on the Lil Tay Instagram account that announced the passing of both Claire and her brother Jason. And from the jump, I knew that post was total BS. The entire Lil Tay account has zero credibility. Let's not forget that her brother Jason was the one who created the Lil Tay character and was exposed for coaching her what to say. <sighs> What do I say? This shit cost me 10,000 and this- I can't stop saying 10,000, 2,000, 3,000, 2,500. Jason is also the one who created the GoFundMe back in 2021 of which I exposed him for lying about. In the GoFundMe he accused Claire's father of giving her a life of abuse. In the GoFundMe he said that Tay's father spent millions of her dollars buying a new mansion, nice cars, trip to spas, trip to Egypt, Dubai, Mexico. But in my video that I dropped two years ago I exposed Jason for lying about a lot of things. There was a Facebook page linked in the GoFundMe which shared dozens of photos of Chris and his wife. Now for those who don't know Chris Hope is Claire's biological father. These photos were supposed to be evidence of Chris using Lil Tay's money that she earned from her fame. Immediately I found it very suspicious how all these allegations were coming from Jason, Claire's older brother, the one who made her become Lil Tay. I took a look at the screenshots and noticed that the dates that they were posted are conveniently cut off, except for one at a Drake concert that was posted on September 18, 2016. Now this immediately stood out to me because this photo was posted in 2016, but Lil Tay was not a thing until December 2017 when Ricegum first made a video about her and blew up in 2018. When I saw saw that photo, I'm like, if this was clearly lied about, then what else was lied about? So I took a look at more photos, did some digging, and here's what I found. This post here says they are going on luxurious vacations, all with Tay's money, while Tay is not seen in any of these photos and locked at home in a dark closet. Now, slight problem, I found the original photo, and it was actually posted on August 4th, 2014. And remember, Lil Tay was not a thing until 2018. Here's a photo of their quote-unquote designer clothing and lavish lifestyle. They have been living with all the money they stole from Tay. Tay's in none of these photos. This is because they had kept her locked in a dark closet. And you got another problem because this photo was actually posted on Christmas Day of 2014. Here's a photo of them at a spa session, which again, conveniently has a date cut out. Again, I found the original post and it was made on February 7th, 2015, before Lil Tay was even a thing. Here's a few photos from their supposed luxurious vacation, but the reality is these photos were taken in 2016. I could keep on going because all of these photos of Chris apparently spending Lil Tay's money Money are a lie. They are all from years before Lil Tay was a thing and Claire was just a regular girl. Now if Jason forced Claire to become Lil Tay and clearly lied about Chris spending all of her money then what else is he lying about? Lil Tay has returned and she isn't so Lil anymore. On September 27th, she was spotted outside Los Angeles International Airport accompanied with her mom Angela and her brother. You got paparazzi bombarding her with questions and Jason can be seen trying to shoot people away which I find absolutely hilarious because this is what Jason wanted. He created Lil Tay so he can get fame and money for himself. Jason was a failed YouTuber and wannabe rapper who copied rice gum. Yo what is up guys it's Ricey back at you again with another their video. So he exploited his vulnerable younger sister to become a deviant on social media, using her to get that fame and money of which he couldn't obtain himself. And if these allegations of abuse really are true, this would make Jason an even bigger piece of trash by continuing to ruin Claire's life. And the whole video just seems staged anyway because how would you even recognize Lil Tay? She's wearing all black, has shades and a mask on. And let's not forget the elephant in the room because the last time we saw her she was 9 years old and now she's 15. Anyway, so 3 days after she was supposed seen landing in Los Angeles, she dropped a music video for her new song titled Sucker for Green. I'm not gonna lie, the song, it's not too bad. It sounds like something you'd hear in an H&M. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the song is good, but it's definitely an improvement from her first song. Oh, that rocket line? Oh my god. But this music video, which is clearly filmed in Los Angeles, I don't buy the fact that it only took them three days to make. To write the lyrics, to hire all the dancers, producers, to rent the property and the cars, to film this, and to get all the licensing to upload it on streaming services, it takes time. Now the whole GoFundMe scam I already exposed back in 2021, a lot of people took the information that I found and used it and it became a pretty big deal. Now with that being said, I went back to detective mode, did some digging and found some things. And I have a theory which if it is true, 
will change everything. First, I need to start off by giving some context, but pay close attention because things are about to get crazy. Five years later, Lil Tay finally made her return to the internet through a dramatic live stream she had on Instagram. They had a whole countdown, and when the timer went off, Tay sat on the piano and played a song. And then she switched up to some guitar with some singing to it. And out of nowhere, she transitioned to some master of puppets. At first, I thought things changed. Lil Tay learned how to sing, play piano, play guitar, but then she went back to her original self. You already know what the f going on, bitch. Lil Tay's back. From here on out, the music stopped and she sat down for a serious talk, one that we've been waiting to hear since she disappeared from the internet over five years ago. So in the stream, she essentially discussed what we already read back in 2021. The stream was set up to look like a high school presentation with different parts to it. She talked about the SU she allegedly suffered by the hands of her father, Christopher Hope. In part two, she talked about Chris's wife, Hanny Hope, who was allegedly her second abuser. In part three, she talked about the way both of them treated Tay when she was living with them. This included violence. They forced her to watch horror movies. I tried to put my face into a pillow when they were playing the horror movie in front of me and honey hope she had me in a chokehold so i couldn't escape and i had to sit through the entire bride of chucky movie when i was young as fuck. and after the movie they shoved her in a dark closet while i was still in the chokehold she put me she shoved me into the closet and locked me in there and she said go play with chucky I thought I was going to die. Apparently they even fed her rotten food. What is this shit? This is what they were packing me for lunch. Rotten, frozen, parasitic. The quote unquote receipts are all on their Facebook page. Here's a photo of what is apparently moldy chicken that was rock hard. Apparently parasites are also infesting it, but to me at least, it looks fine. And hearing the words moldy and frozen defies basic science. Apparently Tay was also fed a month old pizza, expired bread, expired ketchup, and even an expired fruit cup. There was just so much being accused and the fact that this is being shared online when it should be dealt with offline through the criminal justice system, it's just hard to fully believe. Now, I'm not saying that Claire and Jason are lying about all of this, but sometimes the best lies are ones that are blended with the truth. I've already uncovered that Jason lied about Chris spending Tay's money. The expired food just doesn't convince me. And we already know that Jason was forcing his sister to become Lil Tay. Now, the question is, what else is being lied about? Well, here's where things get crazy. On August 9th, a post was made on the Lil Tay Instagram account, which stated that both Claire and her brother passed away. A few days later, it was revealed that they were apparently hacked. In her live stream return, Tay accused her father of being the one who faked her death. Chris Hope was the one that did the death hoax. He was trying to sabotage me. Now Chris has denied these allegations and has threatened to sue for defamation. Now right away when I heard the news of Claire's passing, I called BS. My immediate thoughts when I heard the news was that somehow Claire's mother and brother regained custody of her and that they were going to be making a reappearance on the internet. And I was right because less than two months after the death hoax, Lil Tay returned to the internet and dropped a music video. Five years later, Claire randomly dies, but then we find out it's a hoax and then she suddenly reappears on the internet it can't just be a coincidence chris had custody of his daughter for the years that she was absent because he saw these little tape videos and knew that it would be destroying claire's life now this is only a theory but i uncovered some evidence and i believe that jason has been planning this little tape comeback since 2021 if you go to the gofundme it currently says jason tion is organizing this fundraiser on behalf of tay tion but originally it was on behalf of lil tay which i found weird because lil tay is a character not a real person but for a brief time the beneficiary of this GoFundMe with some random guy named Nestor Taduri. Here's a clip from a TikTok I made back in 2021 and please ignore the hair. It was COVID times and you know, barbers were closed. I went to some random guy in his basement. He, he did it for me like low key. So just anyway, watch the TikTok. And the GoFundMe link used to be linked in the Instagram bio, but if you look, it disappeared. Oh, I went onto the GoFundMe and if you look at the bottom there, it says Jason Tian is organizing this fundraiser on behalf of Nestor Taduri, which is weird because this is a screenshot I have from two months ago. And if you see, it says it's on behalf of Lil Tay. I did look at the name Nestor Taduri and I found this guy here. And if you read the bottom, it says this guy runs a multimedia company providing photography, videography, and media services to clients and customers. So how come the GoFundMe at first was on behalf of Lil Tay, but now it's on behalf of Nestor Taduri? Nestor Taduri in the whole LinkedIn description, it sounded so sus. Why would the 
money from this GoFundMe be going to this guy? The GoFundMe was set to pay for the legal fees and this guy, I mean, he's clearly not a lawyer. Well, since the GoFundMe, I haven't heard about his name up until the Sucker for Green music video was dropped. I took a look at the description where I read the credits and found a stylist and assistant producer named Nestor Tadori. Yep, the same Nestor Tadori that was receiving money from the GoFundMe. You take a look at his LinkedIn profile and his job titles are photo specialist, photographer, video editor, filmmaker, creative director. I thought the GoFundMe was because Jason and Angela didn't have any money and needed to pay these legal fees, but the money was going towards this guy in what seems to be the music video. Now Jason has fucked up so many times and I know for a fact that he's watched my videos and he knows who I am because he blocked my Instagram account. Seriously, who fakes their own death for publicity? That's just sad. With what we've uncovered, we know for a fact that we cannot trust Jason, Lil Tay, Angela, all of these people, they are con artists. Because if Jason forced his sister to become Lil Tay, lied about these photos, lied about where the GoFundMe money is, lied about the fake death, and lied about so much more, I mean, like what else do we not know about? Again, this is only a theory. I don't have 100% concrete evidence about any of this, but I'm entitled to believe what I wanna believe and you are entitled to listen to what I've presented to you guys, hear my argument, and you are entitled to believe what you wanna believe. But it is without a doubt that five years ago and still to this day, Claire is being exploited by her brother and mother. While some things may be true, others may have been escalated or partially lied about. For example, Lil Tay accused her dad of being racist. But it doesn't end there because he's racist as f Do you know one of the reasons that he said to the court that he should have custody of me after I became famous? He said it was because my mom was letting me associate with black and Hispanic people in the entertainment industry. And he said that he, they were going to get me into drugs or they were gonna steal my money or they're gonna exploit me. He hates black and Hispanic people. That was one of his arguments of why I shouldn't be in the entertainment industry. Now, if it is true that Chris did not want her daughter hanging out with people simply because they are black or Hispanic, that is wrong. I do not condone that ideology. However, because I know this family is already full of lies, they might have twisted his words. When Lil Tay was actually Lil, she could be seen hanging out with Lil Pump, who isn't exactly the best idol. And she could also be seen hanging out with Chief Keef and his crew who are smoking around a child. Seriously, who in their right mind would outright say to the Supreme Court of Canada that you do not want your daughter hanging out with people because of their skin color. Jason was claiming that Chris wanted custody of his daughter to take all her money, but no, she was being badly influenced, swearing and pretending to smoke at such a young age. I mean, her life was ruined. She is never going to be able to obtain a regular job because of this. If this social media career doesn't work out, I mean, she's screwed. And I think Chris despises Lil Tay character and just wanted to protect his daughter from her. Anyways, that's officially gonna do it for this video. I need your help to boost this. I'm tired of all this exploitation, all this fakeness. I really wanna get the story straight. I've been trying to reach out to Chris and Hanny Hope. I had nothing, so like I'm not going to defend them. I'm not defending them at all. But I just know that I found so many things that contradict what Jason is claiming and we just can't take anything 100%. At the end of the day, that is what I'm trying to argue. I will be making more videos about this little taste situation. So if you are interested, subscribe so you don't miss it. But anyways, that's officially gonna do it for this video. So until next time, it's been Ivan Steph. Peace. What's up guys, it's Ricey, back at you again with another video, and yo, let me tell you something, so today I woke up